we must stay true to the true doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That everything that happens in life is the will of God. That's why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. You have a destiny with Jesus Christ. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hello, and welcome to Times of Refreshing. I love the title of this program, Times of Refreshing, because every time that we get into the Word of God, we should be refreshed. I love reading the Word of God, and when I read the Word of God, it refreshes my spirit, my soul, uh, and, and even my body. Today, before we begin and get into the Word of God, let's just say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch our spirits today. Have us have ears to hear the Word of God. Have us have spiritual eyes to see what you want us to see. And have our hearts ready to receive the anointed and powerful Word of God. Use this weak vessel to bring the powerful message of Jesus Christ. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless all of you, and thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm just always excited to come into your home and uh, share the Word of God. It's a great privilege to be called by God to uh, go into the world wherever He uh, asks us to go and, and, to, and to share uh, His Word. I've had the privilege of uh, going to Africa, uh, I think, four times now. Uh, and, and we go into all the little villages and the churches and, and just ch share the uh, inspiring message and the good news of Jesus Christ. Today I want uh, I would enti I would entitle my message it's time to shout. It's time to shout. And I want to take you into the uh, Old Testament and uh uh I hope you got your Bibles. Uh, if you don't, uh you can listen along but uh uh it's it's very important to uh, to make sure the pastor is always uh uh, reading the right stuff and, and preaching the right thing. So if you do have a Bible with you, you'll get it and, uh, and, and just kind of work alongside with me, okay? Um, but I'm, I'm in Joshua, the, the book of Joshua. And uh, uh, as I've said before, the gospel of Jesus Christ, as hard it is to live, is actually very easy. It's, it, it's summed up in the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Amen? And it also comes into the three words, which I spoke about before. Believe the word of God. Receive the word of God. And every once in a while say, thank you, Jesus. Believe, receive, thank you. If we can just live our lives that way, we would be blessed in so, so many, so many ways. But anyway, let's get back into, let's get into Joshua. Uh, and our, uh, our story begins... As Joshua is now taking the Israelite people and we're crossing over into the promised land. And he's been doing some battles and now he's come up against the city of Jericho. And I'm going to start in uh, chapter 5 and, and verse 13. I'm just going to read a little bit and then we're going to discuss a little bit. Uh, and then probably read a little bit more and, and discuss a little, a little bit more from there. And it says in verse 13, it says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, there stood a man over against, over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went, went unto him and said unto him, Are you for us? Or are you against us? Are you for us? Or are you our adversary? And he said, this man said, Neither. But as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. Now we realize this is God. This is the Lord. In whatever form he appeared to him, this is God now. And the very first thing Joshua wants to know, before he realizes who it is, 
Are you on our side or are you against us? You see, Joshua is still seeing himself as a mighty warrior, captain of the army. He's in charge. Aren't we all like that in our lives? I'm in charge of my life. I'm in control of my destiny. That old song years ago, I did it my way. It's where Joshua's at. Meets a man. Are you for us or against us? The man says, neither. But from now on, I'm taking over. I'm the captain from now on. You see, when we meet Jesus Christ, he becomes our captain. He becomes our Lord and our Savior. He's now in charge if we'll let him. If we'll let him. Joshua's in the same situation here. And so it says, and Joshua says, when, when, this, when he said this, it says, Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said unto, said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? What do you want me to do? And the captain of the Lord, captain of the Lord's host, said unto Joshua, Loosen your shoe from off your foot, for the place whereon you stand now is holy. And Joshua did so. By doing that, Joshua said, you're in charge. You're the boss. And that's all God wants for you and me to do. For, uh, to allow him to be the planner of our life and allow him to be in control of our life. And if we will allow that, then those 3,000 promises found in the Bible are available for us to prosper. So let's continue on. He's now, he's not the, he's not the captain anymore. He's second in command. The Lord is, is the captain. It says, now Jericho, or the town Jericho, was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. None came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. The city is completely surrounded by a 10-foot wall. The walls are thick enough where chariots could ride on the walls. So I don't know, six, six, eight feet wide. Nobody's going in. Nobody's coming out. Jericho is completely enclosed. That's what Joshua sees. And if he would not have relinquished, at least this is my belief system, if he would not have relinquished his captainship, that's what he would have saw with his physical eyes. No way in, no way out. You ever been in that situation in your life? Faced with the situation? No way around it? Never going to get through this? I guess this is my lot in life. This is my destiny. That's what Joshua would have faced. But because he loosened his shoe, he worshipped and he fell on his face, and he handed over the leadership roles to the one who told him, I'm now the captain. Here's what God said to him. See, I have given unto you, unto your hand, Jericho. Before it was even started, God had already told Joshua, the outcome. You're going to win. You're going to overcome. No one's coming in. No one's going out. But I've already given you Jericho. Isn't that exciting? If we'll follow Jesus and, and, and let him have control of our lives, Every battle we face, we're going to win. 
every situation we come against, God's going to bring us through. Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? For God is with me. God is with me. I've given Jericho unto you. God has promised us so many things. I remember growing up as a, uh, as, as a little boy, and I believed for the longest time that, that when I died and I went to heaven, or if I got to heaven, that uh, regardless, but there was going to be a, uh, a movie screen. And everybody was going to be able to see all the things I did, good and bad. And, and, and that bothered me. Gave, me, gave me nightmares for a while because, you know, we, we've all done things we're ashamed of. We've all done things that we don't want, we wouldn't want anybody to know about. And then one day I read in Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 17, I think it is. He says, your sins and your iniquities I will remember no longer. So there's no movie screen. It's gone. It's forgotten. That's a promise from God. He told me in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 that we will always triumph in Christ. Always. Victory is ours. Why? Because the book of Romans says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. And all we have to do is let God be in control of our lives. I say all we have to do, but that's not easy. That's not easy to follow this invisible God who sometimes looks like it's not going to work out. But if we will prevail to the end, hold on to him to the end, we will see that every circumstance that we go through, he brings us through. I remember a time in my life, and I want to, I want to turn over there real quick. I want to go to a time in my life. It was a, it was a real uh, bad time in my life, and, and, uh, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but I got to a, such a point in my life where I just, I just yelled out to God. I said, God, if I don't hear from you in the next hour or so, uh, th then obviously you don't, you don't care about me. Uh, and I wasn't testing God. I wasn't doing any of this. I, I was hurting. <laughs> and, and so I waited and I waited and I waited. I think I was in my car driving. And, uh, and, and I waited a whole, whole long time, and I finally got to the end of my waiting period, um, and I, I didn't hear nothing. And so I said, oh, well, heck with it. And I just I turned the radio on, and this is exactly what happened. As soon as I turned the radio on, and I don't know what station it was beforehand, I'd forgotten all about that, but I turned the radio station on and it was turned to a, a Christian uh, radio station. And the person that was on the other side of the radio station uh, was being interviewed by somebody, and, and all I caught was this. The, the, it was a lady, she said, before I answer that question, there's somebody out in the radio audience that needs to hear this word from the Lord. And here's what she read from Isaiah chapter uh, 40 and start at verse 27. She says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And immediately, as soon as she got done saying that, she says, okay, now I will continue with the show and answer the question or whatever was going on. But she stopped in the middle of that and said, somebody needs to hear this. Now, somebody could say, well, that's just coincidence or, you know, who knows what was going on or maybe it's for some. No, I believed with all my heart that God spoke to her because he knew that I was struggling, terribly struggling. And that word came through her to me. And I remember getting home. My wife still uh, remembers that I came running through the door. And I says, there is a God. There is a God. I heard from God. And, and we're going to make it. We're going to get through this. Now, I'd like to tell you that the thing that I was going through, some of the circumstances didn't change. But just the fact that I knew God was there and God was in control of the situation enabled me to know that my God will see me and get me through everything. So what the devil intended for evil, God turned around and I became stronger because of that. Hallelujah, praise, praise the Lord. So we obey God, we believe, we receive, we say thank you. Believe, receive, and say thank you. Now, I want to jump down to, uh, uh, to verse 10. Because uh, the next, next verse is, uh, uh, he's telling them what to do. He's telling his great, his great uh, uh, warrior how to fight, fight the battle. See, once we turn our lives over to, to Christ, he starts telling us how to live. And sometimes the way he explains things or, or, or tells us or what he wants us to do does not seem like it's the best way. But it's a matter of faith. You see, God works in the supernatural realm, and we live in the natural realm. We see all the answers to everything, mostly from, a, from our natural eyes, and God has the answers for us from the supernatural. That's why Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we renew our mind by putting on the mind of Christ. Start seeing things through his eyes. So anyway, he's telling Joshua, here's what I want you to do. In verse 3 of chapter 6, he says, Compass the city, all you men of war. I like how he puts that in there. You go around the city, all you men of war, and go around about the city once. Are you visualizing this? Walk around the city of Jericho, around the walls, one time. He's talking to the men of war. And he says, do that for six days. One time. For six days. One time, and then go sit down and rest, I guess. Men of war. They had to be sitting among themselves saying, Joshua, this ain't the way we do it. This ain't the way we do it. We get our bows and arrows and we get everything and we, get, and we start shooting. God says, go around the city one time for six days. And verse 4 says, and then get seven priests and get seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day, you shall come to the city, the city seven times and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Is this any way to fight a war? Is this any way to win a battle? Not in the natural. But in the supernatural. Do you know who's in control? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The great I am, the open door. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. That's who's in charge. 
But wouldn't it be hard to do things God's way? And then Joshua goes in there and tells them this is the way we're going to do it. Now I want you to jump down to verse 10. I just love this. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then shall you shout. Do you know what Joshua was telling his people that day? I'm going to put it in the only terms that I know. Shut up. Be quiet. I've listened. This is Joshua's. Been, I've listened for 40 years to your complaining, to your whining, to your bitterness. And I want you just to be quiet. And the reason why is this. Joshua knew that if they were in the natural realm, he knew that if they spoke, it would be negative. It would be negative talk, and that negative talk would birth more negative talk. It would birth more complaining, bitterness. Why are we here? We should have stayed in Egypt. At least we had food there. We all remember the story. Forty years. They wandered in the wilderness. They had prayed for several hundred years to be delivered from the Egyptians. They get delivered from the Egyptians. And now all they do is complain. That's human nature. That's you and me. First thing that we do, if we're not careful... When bad, something bad happens or things don't work out our way, we complain. Wonder why is this happening to me? Never happens to anybody else. Why is it always me that makes the mistake? And so Joshua said, just be quiet. Don't even say a word. As we relinquish control to God, we have to be careful what we say. What we say. Turn to Proverbs chapter 18. And verse 21. The Bible, the Word of God. Remember Jesus said, in the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So in other words, what I'm reading to you here today is Jesus Christ personified, alive in our lives. And here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whatever comes out of your mouth, that's the fruit you're going to eat. If you think it's going to be negative, it will become negative. If you start to think things are going to go downhill from here, they're going to start going downhill from here. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. But if we can turn it around and start speaking life, start speaking hope, start speaking victory, we will see that come to pass also. That's why Joshua said, be quiet until I tell you to shout. And when you shout, 
I want you to shout with everything you have. Church, it's time for us to shout. It's time for us to, to, to rise up and, and become who God wants us to become. It's, it's time for us to live the overcoming Christian life. It's time for us to wake up in the morning and be excited about what's going to happen today. Because greater is he that is in each one of us than he that's in the world. When we start shouting, when we start announcing to the world who we are in Jesus Christ, we'll start to see things change. Now, I want to tell you something. These people under Joshua, who is under God, in verse, let's go to verse 15. It says, it came to pass now on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and they compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. They did exactly the way God wanted them to do it. And it came to pass in verse 16 at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, now is the time to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Down in verse 20 it says, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. The walls of your life and the problems in your life will not fall down until you start shouting. Until you start getting excited. Until you start shouting a shout of victory and a shout of hope. It's time for the Christians to rise up. The world has knocked us down enough times. Has told us that things are always not going to work out. It's time for us to rise up. Praise the Lord. I hope I inspired you today. I hope I got you excited to you today. God is good. God is great. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I want you to know as I close, God loves you and so do I. God bless you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.